eat, sleep, bet, repeat. That's how we get down on the opening line at EliteSportsBetting.com. And I am very excited for the show today as I got a man who finally understands what it means not to have enough sleep in his life. Congratulations to the proud new papa, Daddy Duke, we're going to call him today. What's going on, buddy? Hey, man. Emphasis on the sleep there, Benny. Something I haven't had in a couple days. Um, mm-hmm. And like you just, you know, give me your infinite wisdom as you always do pre-show and post-show. I got nothing but um, fun times, but rough times ahead for the next couple of weeks. But it's good to be back in the domain. We're out of the hospital, finally in front of my dual monitors. And I got four monitors going now. So I feel like I'm back and ready to get some games going. So we have a couple to talk about today. Yeah, but before we get into that, go ahead and give everybody the stats and, and all that. There was money on this stuff, Duke, so this is important right now. Hey, man, beautiful baby girl, 20 and a half inches long, eight pounds. Eight pounds, 20 and a half inches. All right, I got to go see who won the pool on that one right now because, <laughs> I mean, listen, we're a sports betting company. You know there was money on this stuff. Like, come you gotta on. got to do it. It's funny, actually, my dad was giving me shit because uh, he's like, as much as we gamble on this family, you don't have a family pool. I've been doing so many other pools outside of my own family. I literally just forgot to get one going for us. So, yeah. Well, I know the subs had one. And I also wanted to make sure I told you this. I was waiting on air to tell you until we had a good time. And I think now's a good time. You are one of the most loved guys at the company when it comes to our subs. Because I got a whole bunch of PayPals this week from a bunch of guys that are subscribers to the soccer package. Basically saying to me, Benny, we want to try to do something good for Duke. Something nice for the baby. We don't know how to do this, right? So I basically said to them, I said, all right, we'll figure out what you want to do. I said, you know, I'll I'll make sure that whatever you guys want to get gets down to them. So a bunch of guys actually chipped in, um, you know, Brett, Ryan, and and Micah were the three that were the main guys behind it. So I want to give them a shout out. But a bunch of guys actually chipped in, and I went and ordered them the other day. The only problem is we got to wait for them to get shipped over from England, but there's a whole bunch of Manchester United stuff coming in for your daughter that, that, is awesome, that I'm going to get shipped down to you as soon as it gets here to my house. I'll turn it around and ship it down to you right down there. So like I said, the most loved man amongst our subs here at the Elite uh, Sports Network. Dude, that is awesome, Benny. Thank you to you for handling all that. And of course, the love is, it's a two-way street. I mean, we spend so much time with these guys. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're friends at this point, right? I mean, yep. <laughs> I talk to them more than I talk to most of my actual friends because we're sitting there in the chat True. all day or in DMs and all that. And, man, I really appreciate that, you guys. You didn't have to do it, obviously, but, um, hey, that's awesome. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, so as, soon, that's as cool. soon as it gets here, I'm, I'm going to get it down to you. It takes them a little while to ship this stuff from England sometimes, so I'm hoping it gets here before she grows out of the three to six and six to nine stuff, but it's coming <laughs> on the way. I just want you to know, buddy, it's Dude, that's awesome. coming on the way. That's awesome. Let's go. Yeah. yeah, she so my wife is um she's probably five nine, but when she wakes up, she's about five eleven. She grows overnight and she's got <laughs> my uh my daughter's got my wife's length. So she's a pretty long baby, but um full head of hair, baby. Full head of hair. Like, All right. Well, I mean, you got you got a nice center back or uh, you know, a striker yes. on the other end, depending on which way you want to go. With you, I figure you'll probably make her a striker, but we'll see what happens. You never know. Hey, wherever the money is, I know for damn sure she's gonna have a golf club in her hand from the time she can stand up. Okay, there you go. That works too. All right, so let's let's get into the reason why people are really here, other than to talk about you know how, how excited we are for you. We're really here to talk a little bit of soccer as well here today, yeah. and we actually have a Premier League game today on Friday that we're going to talk about first, right? So let's start there. Yeah, it's um, if you guys remember back to last week, bit of a weird time. It's a, a two week game week, right? So two weekends where we're getting everyone plays once over these two weeks. We're coming towards the tail end of that. So we do have a game today between Leicester and Wolves. That's going to be one of our games we're betting on. We also have a game over in Germany we're betting on. We do have four more games this weekend. We're not going to talk about those here on the podcast, the show today. Mm -hmm. But um, obviously, if you get over to EliteSportsBetting.com, all that information will be over there. But today, Wolves host Leicester. And I want to talk about this game specifically, Benny, because I want to get your input, man. You're, you're a sharp okay. soccer guy, and here we have you know, t- a team in Leicester who was hot and just had probably a two-and-a-half, three-week streak where they were really kind of hitting a wall, we'll call it, mm. right? They got through the holiday period and really struggled at the beginning of the new year, but starting to come around, but then you have Wolves who play the top half tough mm. and are actually scoring some goals here. So you look at the line, Wolves are plus 150 just to win on the three-way line, Leicester, who are third in the table, you know, several places above Wolves, are plus 200, total at two and a half, juice on the under. actually like the under. Um, but I think I'm going to go a different way. But what are your thoughts on, on this game? 
Yeah, so I mean, you kind of mentioned that the teams are moving in opposite directions, I guess would be the way that I was looking at it this morning. Yep. But here's my thing is I still think, you know, Leicester's the better team. So if you're going to give me plus 200 on who I think is the better team, I'm going to take it. Now, again, is this a, you know, mortgage the house, sell the, uh, you know, sell all the furniture and you're going to double it up kind of deal? Not at all, but it's a, it's a value situation, right? Like you're looking for the value here. To me, this game's kind of a coin flip. Like if it ended 1-1, I wouldn't be shocked. But at the same point in time, the difference between 1-1 and one nothing on either side isn't that big. And if you're giving me, you know, basically plus 200, so I'm getting two to one odds on who I think is the better team anyway, that's the way I already went in this game. I took, I took Leicester. So I was waiting to see what you were going to say about it, hoping I didn't make the wrong decision here. People probably think we're joking because we say this all the time. We don't talk about this pre-show intentionally so we can have these conversations on air. Mm-hmm. You're not thinking exactly where I was. So the under is juiced. And what I worry about when betting unders, and I do bet unders from time to time, is mm-hmm. if game flow is so dependent on early action. So we think yeah. about a football game. If we have, you know um, – I don't know, Army <laughs> play in Michigan or something. Mm. And someone who's running the triple option and then they throw, you know, a deep pass and then stop Michigan on their first three or four drives. They're just going to keep pounding and grinding and yep. grinding. The exact opposite is what we're worried about here. You know, if we have two grinded out teams like Wolves can be and Lester at times, mm. and we get a goal in the first 10 minutes, especially if it's Lester and Wolves are now chasing the game, we could see a hell of a lot more goal opportunities than we would if it gets to halftime at zero zero or something like that. But Mm -hmm. I'm with you, Benny. I actually like both teams to score in this game and it's juiced up to minus minus one thirty five. And you might say it's a little weird considering the total, but go back through wolves history at home this season. They've played 12 home games thus far. 10 have featured both teams scoring. So I want to attack that versus a total or a side because I think we can get both teams to score and this game can end up two to two, two to one. Our under is gone, but we happen to hit that. So you think about it, only 42% of their home games have gone over two and a half. 83% have had both teams scoring. So this kind of eliminates that early goal risk. If I were to pick a side, I'd probably lean Leicester. And I was actually looking at Leicester draw no bet, which as of last night, was I think minus 120 it's now minus 105 so if you're saying man minus 135 is a lot of juice to lay for both teams to score I'd just go Lester draw no bet game ends in a tie no matter if it's 0-0 or 10 to 10 you get your money back obviously if Lester win you got a winner on your hands there yeah I I actually like minus 105 I mean that's probably the way to go because like I said I don't you know, I mean, again, the game flow could matter. But, like, to me, when I looked at this game originally, I was like, this is going to end 1-1. Yeah. So, like, this is one of those games where, you know, if you can get – I still think – like I said, I still think, you know, Leicester's the better team. So, if I could get them and also kind of limit my downside. I like the plus 200 because I just feel like that's – I feel like it's too much. Like, I, yeah. like I, I would have thought, all right, maybe they're, like, plus 150 in this. But plus 200 just feels a little high. So, I feel like there's some value in that line. But – the minus 105, for those of you who don't want to don't want to take the risk, I think is a really good bet. Worst case scenario, I think you end up getting your money back on that one. So and I mean, good. All, the, all the games Wolves play basically are to keep it close, right? They, don't, they rarely have yeah. a two-goal margin in either direction. If you look at these home games, they lost to Liverpool 2-1. to one. They beat Man City 3-2. to two. Chelsea was the outlier. They lost 2-5 to five at home. Mm-hmm. Sheffield won one tie. Tottenham won two loss. United won one tie. Burnley won one tie. Newcastle won one tie. Southampton won one tie. That's basically where this is going to fall, and that's why the total is where it's at, and the juice on both teams to score is where it's at. If they get out to an early lead, they're not going to go push for a second. If they give up a goal, they're going to go grab a, you know, grab the equalizer, but maybe not necessarily push for that winner. So yep. a lot of different ways you can go here. I'm right now – I have uh, both teams to score locked in. I've already bet that. But this line has moved from minus 120 to minus 105 overnight for that draw no bet for Lester. So I'll probably start throwing some, uh, throwing some cash on that. Yeah. You, you got to nibble on that. That feel like, like I say, and that also is why you're getting the plus 200 on them to win. Cause those two mm-hmm. lines are kind of derivatives of each other. So when one of them moves, usually the other one moves as well. And, you know, like I said, I think there's value on both of those here today. And what you can do in a situation like this, Benny, where you think it's the better team and they're getting plus odds, let's say they do grab an early goal on the road away you can certainly hedge out or try to middle it or something in game there's a lot of value we've talked about this several times in game in soccer betting and so if you like something you know you feel like you got really good value pre-game throw it in and then hit it live in game 
we've been we've been hedging and scrambling and mm-hmm. and getting out of uh, some bad spots recently as we're uh, trying to get this baby out of my wife here in, in the last <laughs> week or so. Found a ton of value in game. One we're going to talk about Borussia Dortmund here shortly. We hit over three and a half, over four and a half, and over six and a half in a game, in the same game. So make sure, uh, you know, it's great to get this money down early, but there's a lot of value in game. Yeah, no, and especially in soccer, because, I mean, if you're watching the lines in soccer, there's a lot of five, ten-minute stretches where there are no goals. There are a lot of 90-minute stretches where there are goals, but there's a lot of five or ten-minute stretches where there's no goals. And if you like the team at plus 110, you wait that five or 10 minutes. Now they're plus plus one thirty. You wait another five minutes. Now they're plus plus one fifty. So catching them at the right time before the goals happen. And you know, then the goal happens and they go down to minus two fifty and like, you know, the matter of a set. And that's, that's why the, you know, it's an event risk kind of sport where, you know, major events can change things quickly. And that's why the end game is so good. But you and mentioned is- the, you mentioned the Dortmund game. So let's go over to Germany and talk about yeah. that for a little bit right now. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and, and this in-game betting strategy is something I'm evaluating right now uh, because mm-hmm. I'm greedy, right? I, I know how much the lines are going to move over a five, 10 minute period. And I, mm-hmm. I watch the game flow and I, you know, let's say in this game, Lester's pounding, knocking on the door, they're going to score. But if they hold off for another five minutes, I'm grabbing another 20, 30 cents there. So mm-hmm. I'll just kind of hope it doesn't happen. And it's been going the other way on me. So I haven't placed the bets. I've been a bit greedy and what I know is going to happen happens earlier than I thought. And so mm. now where I could have, you know, picked up minus 115, minus 120, I don't get anything down. And now that's minus 450. Yeah. And now there's just no bet, no value to be had. I'm trying to evaluate my own process to see where that fine line is. Long term, what is more profitable waiting to get a better number or taking action where it's at and having an unpredictable outcome. Right. So Mm -hmm. as of right now, I think I'm pretty conservative with that. I could probably be a little bit more aggressive, but again, I'm more worried about your guys's money than I am my own. So that's really where a lot of my betting uh, strategy comes in, but fun Mm -hmm. game this afternoon over in, uh, in Germany, Borussia Dortmund hosting Eintracht Frankfurt. Of course, dirt Dortmund feature the Kraken. I don't know if that's going to stick, but that's what I'm naming this dude. Erling Braut Holland. He finally did not score this last time out, but he has something like seven goals and 50 minutes of action off the bench before his first start. Uh, Cost me a bunch of money there with not getting that goal. But like I said, we hit the over in game four different times to end up profitable. Yeah, and that was a high scoring game for him not to get one too. And he had really good chances early. And I'm thinking, he's getting these chances. This is no joke, but we got to actually have a three and a half total for this match. Um, Dortmund are the favorites, minus 225 at home. Frankfurt plus 575, who's not a bad team, by the way. I think there's six in the Bundesliga. Mm. But um, it's gone up a touch. It was at even last night. It's minus 105 on the over here of three and a half. And I want to hit that because I do think it's going to go up the closer we get to kickoff, Um, you know, especially if Holland is confirmed in, Benny. Mm. We've seen where that hour before the game, there's some movement one way or the other. If he starts, it goes up a touch. But a lot of that movements we're anticipating. If he doesn't start, we do get a little bit of value coming back on it. Um, they're, Frankfurt are in really good form themselves. They've won three of the last four. They had a draw smash in the middle there. They're scoring at a decent clip. Just beat Augsburg 5-0 to zero in their last home match. This is the yellow wall. We've talked about this. Dortmund has a huge home field advantage. They just suck those goals in, especially when they're going towards that yellow wall. So the last, let's say, six home matches for Borussia Dortmund. Mm-hmm. 5-0 win, 5-1 to one win, 3-3 draw. 5-0 win, 3-3 draw, 3-0 win. So there's goals, 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 baby. It's going to be a fun match. I'm trying to look up right now while you're talking here if I can see what the two score on him is. Um, I know last night it was uh, minus – I was going to say the first – yeah, it can't be that good because – th- Yeah, to him to score the first goal. All right, so it's come down a little bit. It's minus 177 right now. Um, but him to score the first goal is only plus 280, and him to score the last goal is only plus 280. When you get like three to one or less on a guy to score, like those, those are the numbers that are reserved for, you know, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, like, like the guys who are, you know, the major, major goal scorers in, uh, in soccer. So that's, that's high praise for him right now already, especially for a guy who I don't even, has he had a start? Was his last game his first start? Last game was his first start and he played well, but uh, a bit of a weird game for Dortmund where they didn't play particularly well, blew some chances, but just didn't fall to him. And he had him, and he had a couple really good looks, uh, especially in that first half. So he'll bounce back. He'll be perfectly fine. 
Yeah, minus 177 for him to score today. It's something It's something that I think you can kind of – I'm just throwing some numbers here together right now. Like, if you took him to score and uh, Dortmund to win outright, you can get it down to about even money. Yeah. And like, so um, those two together, like him to score – not not to score first goal, just to score in general at minus 177. And then Dortmund, I'm looking at minus 250 here on DraftKings. You put the two of them together, you get minus 106. So, there you, go. you know, you bet 100 to win like 94, 95 or something like that, which is, as a matter of fact, I'm about to put that in right now while we're talking. Here. So That's one different. of the benefits of DraftKings. And I think FanDuel allows you to do that as well. Yeah, with Bovada. soccer, not with all sports, but with soccer they do. Yeah. Where you can, uh, you can parlay something, you know, something happening along with who's going to win or lose. And there is some positive correlation to those things. So, you know. If he scores, there's a good chance they're going to win because they already got the goal already. So there it is. I know, like Bovada doesn't allow you to do that. So we they have yeah. some exotic bets that they've put together. Like I know mm-hmm. I was looking at last night, Dortmund to win, uh, the game going over one and a half goals, and Holland to score is minus one thirty five. Yeah. So I mean, that right, so you're better. You're better here. With you don't even have to worry about the over here. If they win one exactly. nothing and Holland has the goal, you're good, and that's even money on DraftKings. So why you're again, shopping around for sure? That's what I was gonna say. We always say shop around here because the sites are all offering different money on stuff, and you obviously want to get uh, get your money down where you're getting the best return on it. Now, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about here, Duke, because this is something that I actually had never heard of, and you mentioned it to me in the pre-show. So I said, let's talk about this on show. Something called a mythical matchup. So kind of explain to people what this is and then, and then give them your bet on it too. Yeah, as if this wasn't confusing enough for you guys who are new to soccer betting. And by the way, before we do that, the tough part for me today is not going to make 10 bets on this Borussia Dortmund game. So I do have three. <laughs> I have over one and a half total goals, not for either team, total goals in the first half. That's plus 105. I like over three and a half goals for the game. It was at even money at last night. It's at minus 105 now. And I like both teams to score and over two and a half goals, which might be better odds for you, Benny, but Bovada, that's an, an offering, a one bet offering. You can parlay those together on your book. You'll probably get better than this. But that's minus 135. So those are my three bets on just that game. But let's talk about a mythical matchup. And I'm not sure every book has this, but it's what it says. It's two teams who are playing actual games, but not against each other. Mm-hmm. But what their goals – scored for and what the other team's goal scored for makes this matchup. So in particular, we have Holland's new team against his old team, Borussia Dortmund versus Salzburg over in Austria. This is offered over on Bovada where I spend a lot of my action and they make a line. So however many goals Dortmund's going to score and how many goals Salzburg's going to score, I actually like Dortmund uh, in this mythical matchup. We're going to go towards the total here. Salzburg's at home against uh, LASK, like I said, in the Australian or in Austrian league. They've been on winter break since de- December 14th, the Austrian league. Obviously okay. up in the Alps, they haven't played. They, they go indoors for several Makes months. Sense. They've been playing some friendlies, but this is their first league game. So they've been playing like teams from Qatar, very low-level teams. And this is Salzburg, who is dominant in the Austrian league. I want to say that. But first game back in league play, they drew 2-2 the last time out against LASK. I'm banking on some goals here from both teams. So if we can get two out of Dortmund, we can get two out of Salzburg, which, by the way, is extremely reasonable. We're at four. The total is four and a half, and it's minus 120. And so if we can get one of these teams to score three, which Salzburg can, they've been rolling against the the competition over in, in Austria especially with coming back, defense maybe a little unorganized. If we can get three or four out of them, this thing's going to be a cakewalk. But over four and a half goals, Dortmund and Salzburg. And I'm laying 2.4 units on this to win two. Biggest bet of the day. I like this, actually, because, I mean, just the Dortmund side alone, we were already talking about taking some of those overs and looking for two or three goals out of them. So, you know, like you said, if we can get them from, uh, from Salzburg as well, then we, we got it's a two home teams, there. two big favorites. You know, the thing about this is it's not game flow dependent, right? They're not playing each other. These are two mm-hmm. independent actions. So, uh, you know, assuming the games go to the script that I've written out for each of these two teams, this will be a fun thing to watch. I think the Salzburg game starts at one, somewhere around there. So get that bet in. 
Dortmund's at 230, but uh, we'll get to sweat out a couple different games, hoping for one bet to, uh, to hit there. All right, I like this because you know what? I have nothing else to do today since there's no basketball. No basketball. Besides, yeah, I've basically been staring at Fangraph baseball stats, getting my baseball research started for, you know, for that coming up. So for anybody who's looking for more information on some of the soccer stuff, including the DFS side and the games on Saturday, you know, you can always sign up over at um, www.elitefantasy.com. That's where Duke puts his write-ups up every day. We got the podcast and everything coming out as well. Um, so you'll get access to all that stuff. And if you sign up for the VIP, which is what I recommend everybody do, you also get access to all the baseball stuff we got coming up, the NBA stuff for the second half that we got going on, the NHL stuff this week, which is the one week of the year where I play NHL since there's no NBA basketball for me to play today. Um, so, you know, you got to keep yourself busy here, Duke. And uh, now that you got a baby now, you don't get to sleep anymore either. So you're up at 2, 3 in the morning like the rest of us, just mashing buttons, putting in bets, and making lineups. So Look, I consider, life. I consider MLB Dreams preseason baseball content or spring training baseball content part of my compensation yep. over at Elite Fantasy and EliteSportsBetting.com. Yeah. So that'll be coming up here, uh, you know, shortly. Obviously, get in there. I just tail it blind. I don't watch a ton of baseball. Mm -hmm. And uh, that alone will pay for itself. We've got experts in every single sport. So uh, get on over there and check it out. I will say this. I do watch a lot of baseball, but I still get down on every one of those lines. He, yeah. he was up 100 units last year. So no matter what you're betting, you, even if you're betting $10, that means, you know, if you're a $10 better who has $100 in your account, that means he helped you turn your account from 100 to 1,000. You know, and if you're somebody who's betting, uh, you know, 100, 200 bucks, I mean, just do the math. Multiply that by 100. Ten twenty thousand dollar profit you had from tailing his plays last year, definitely helped. Uh, definitely helped me with pay for some of the things we need to get fixed in the new house. And uh, you know, shout out to MLB Dream for that. <laughs> so there we go. We got some soccer stuff here today. Like I said, if you're looking for the Saturday stuff, you can find that over in the packages at uh, Elite Fantasy and EliteSportsBetting.com. So for the new dad, congratulations once again, buddy, my man Duke, who needs to go take a nap right now. So we got to sign off. That's Duke. I'm Benny. This has been another episode of The Opening Line at EliteSportsBetting.com.